Estate Broker School with Mike Krein, sponsored by Rio Genesis. We are your partners for your real estate success. Definitely success is to be able to pursue the things in life that I want to do. That means I need the money to do them and I need the time to do them. You're a business person and your business is feeding your family. So you have to do whatever needs to be done to accomplish that goal. And that means changing and looking at things differently. So it made perfect sense to us. This is the new beginning, the new way of doing things, a way of doing things better. So hence the term Rio Genesis. Can you sell an office with 100 agents? Yes. All day long. So we're building an office not just because of the money right now, but we want the money in the future too and the exit strategy. Now, building an office, running a recruiting program requires cash, correct? Yes or no? Yes. I expect answers. I'm gonna go on a roll today. Actually, I'm gonna go on a rant by the end of the day. A lot to go over. Cash flow solves all problems. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yes. I want you to think about this very carefully. Do any of you have any problem in your, well, let's start. Do any of you have problems in your lives? Yes. Yeah, we all do. I like the spouses pointing at each other. That's classic. <laughs> well, you know what? This is great. You, we're going to make you so much money that you can afford to divorce each other. <laughs> you walked into that. Because we all, as men, we all understand cheaper to keep her. Okay? Come on, I, I just couldn't help that. If anybody of you, any of you are wondering on whether or not I'm a chauvinist, just ask my wife. She'll be sure to explain it to you. And I am right up in, never mind. Oh. All right. Building a business requires cash flow, especially a good recruiting program. A full-time recruiter, 60,000 base plus a car. And there's reasons you give them a car, because there's a whole bunch of recruiting techniques. I'll go into another time that revolve around that. But you need cash flow. The BPO department right now is the fastest, easiest way to build a renewable stream of cash. Okay? Every time you do a deal, what happens? When you close the sale, what happens? You get paid. I'm assuming that's the reason you're doing it, right? Okay. How many times do you get paid? Once. Once. Not a renewable income stream. Not a transaction. Now, REO and the reason we all gravitated is a renewable income stream by nature because the clients have more properties for you to sell. But a BPO department is a constantly renewable income stream. And it happens much quicker. Stacy, what's your average pay cycle on a BPO? Um, most under 30 days. Under 30 days. On an REO, four months before you get paid. So this is something you can have cash flow in 30 days. Is there any other part of the real estate business you can get cash flow in 30 days? No. Other than doing rentals. OK. BPO orders are at an all-time high, still rising. Where's Ed? Stand up for a second, Ed, would you please? You all heard, by the way, everybody say hi to Ed. Hello. Make him feel welcome. Thank you. OK, you all heard that Ed did about 200 and some BPOs for NationStar and got a $400,000 listing while he was at the conference, and sent me an email, I'm gonna say, what, about a month ago? Would you please tell him what you told me? <laughs> How many are you gonna do this month? <laughs> Net profit, 20 grand a month. It's easier than you think. How long will it take you to set it up? Is that two weeks full time or like an hour here and there? An hour here. I just want to clarify that. And at this point forward, do you actually do anything? No. No. Okay, how many of you in this room would like 20 grand a month that you don't have to do anything for? The rest of you are that rich. <laughs> What's your market? I have to pay my staff. Yeah. Well, no, that was net though after paying your staff, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have to write checks, and cash checks and write checks. God, what a rough life you have. <laughs> See? OK? They're going to show you how to actually do the BPOs and on the staff side and the automation side. I'm going to show you how to build the department and a couple tricks on how to get it done as quick as possible. But I want everybody to write down $20,000 a month. Write it right down on your paper. And whether or not you want that. If you had $20,000 a month coming in that you weren't doing anything except writing the checks, and he's not even writing them, he's got a payroll service, 
How many of you would be happy retiring at 20 grand a month? Yeah, you can quite nicely. <clears throat> the business will be there forever, for at least the next five to 10 years, and it's growing. So that's part A. Second part is if you had an extra $20,000 a month coming in, could you hire a manager? Yes. Could you hire a recruiter? Yes. Could you redo your office? Yes. Could you become the biggest player in town? Yes. Are there any other brokers in your market other than the majors okay, that have $20,000 a month extra to invest in growing their business? No. What's going to happen to your competition when you start out spending them like that? You're going to wipe them out. That's the point. Okay? This would be my first project I would work on. While this was starting to build, I'd be putting everything in place to launch my recruiting program and grow the office. Here's your cash flow. It is the fastest way to do it, and it's so. Ed, please tell me, was it hard or easy? Easy. easy. Can everybody say easy? Easy. Thank you. OK. Your goal, $20,000 a month additional net profit. OK, we're not talking gross. We're talking net. Time frame is six months, just like Stacy said. I've seen people do it faster, some take a little longer, but I've seen people ramp up to this in 90 days. Depends how hard you want to push it. Difficulty level. What was the answer, Ed? And the rest of you? Easy. Thank you. What was your capital requirement? There wasn't one, really, was it? You had this, the office, right? But there was no capital. We didn't have to buy a building, buy furniture, buy equipment, anything like that, right? You'll have to float your staff, but that's about it. We do that all day long. So if you want to call it a capital requirement to pay the shooters on your staff, what could it be? Five grand, maybe? It's not much. Implementation time. If you look at all the time it takes you to set this up and get it running, it is under eight hours. You said you did it over two weeks, but it was like an hour here or there, right? Eight to 10 hours, and you can do it in under eight. Why is this possible? We know he's doing it. Again, if I show you the why, the how makes more sense. How many of you have ever been to Taco Bell? How many will admit to going eating that crap? <laughs> I'm sorry, but for stuff that sells for under a buck, that crap is delicious for a dollar. <laughs> it really is. It's addictive. I swear there's like crack mixed in there somehow. OK? They had a net profit last year of over $3 billion. Wow. All while selling products for less than a buck. It's amazing, isn't it? You know what's the most visited restaurant in the world as far as number of people served? No, Taco Bell. I didn't believe it either. I was doing some research for another project. Okay? Our product is 40 to 50 times that. We get 40 to 50 bucks for a BPO. They could make $3 billion a dollar at a time. Okay? We could do it 50 bucks at a time. Who has it easier, them or us? We do. We much better profit margin, too. Costs. Your biggest cost is your field inspectors and your photos. But it's not really the cost of the photos. We're all digital. How many of you guys remember doing 35 millimeters and trips to the photo mat? And then overnighting them. I spent three grand a month at photo mat. OK? Digital cameras were the greatest thing on earth for our business. That was the biggest cost, was film and developing. What you have now on field inspectors is really just labor, isn't it? Just labor. What's it going to cost you? About 10 bucks per set of photos. Now, you can spend a little more, a little less. Depending on your volume, whether you pay piecemeal or whether you put people on salary to do this. I will tell you this. When you get up really, really large, over 1,000 BPOs a month, put them on salary all day long. People will take less money for security. OK? You ever heard the, it's actually a quote from Ben Franklin. And that's people who will trade their freedom for security neither deserve, sure now receive either. Anybody, you know that quote? No. You should, it's really important. I'm paraphrasing, but people who trade their freedom for security shall neither receive, no, they neither deserve nor shall receive either, okay? How many of you have been through an airport lately and got a natal probe from the TSA? <laughs> Was that an invasion of your freedoms? You all traded it for, for a false sense of security, didn't you? Think about that. You did. OK? Now, most people will trade dollars for security. My point being is when you get large enough, 
that cost drops dramatically because you put them on salary. It's a steady paycheck. They will work for a lot less for the guarantee of a steady paycheck every week. Do you understand what I'm saying and why? And that's true with all your staff. So a lot of you like to put your staff on bonuses and piecework or per file. That's great at the beginning when you're looking at cash flow issues. But I'll tell you, in the long run, it's the most expensive way to do it. You can get better people, more stable people, much longer for much less by putting them on salary. I just want you to remember that. But we're going to work on an average cost of about $10. A data entry clerical. They're going to cost you about $5 a BPO. The reason is this. With the automation software and a field person giving them the photo, does it really take anybody more than 15 minutes to do a BPO? It should be less, closer to seven or eight. Okay? I'm being kind. Okay? It's really a lot more. I'm just going to assume this is worst case scenario. Now, $20 an hour, can you get a good person in your market for 20 bucks an hour for salary? Yes or no? Yes. This is not a little entry clerk. This is someone who could, this is a manager salary here, right? right. Okay, so you can get a good person and you're going to want one. The math, very simple. Current BPO fees running 35 to 70. And if you're in a rural market like Stacy's in Illinois, she bangs these people 200 bucks a pop sometimes because there's nobody else will go out there. Okay, but 35 to 70. Average fee is about 45 when you average it out. Our average cost is $15. Where did we get that from? The field inspector. 10 and 5. That's our cost. 10 for the field inspector in the photos, 5 bucks per BPO for the staff. Average net profit of $30 a unit. This is the fattest profit margin in the business. How many companies would kill for a profit margin like that? All of them. What's the profit margin in the supermarket? Anybody know? 1%. 1 very close to 1%. 1 to 3, you're absolutely right. So all these big giant companies, these colossal billion dollar companies, are working on like 1% to 3% profit margins. What's yours? Look at the size of this thing. It's huge. Great business. So how do we get to 20,000 net profit each month? Is that where you want to go? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. I don't believe you. Yes. 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 Much better. All right, 20,000. We need $30 per unit net, 667 BPOs a month on average. You may be higher or lower depending on your market, your cost, how you're structured, and which client mixes at the time. But this is about where you ought to be. There's 4.3 weeks in a month, correct? 52 week year. So 667 divided by 4.3, you can do it the other way by 52. 155 BPOs a week, that's all it is. Ed's already doing more than that. Dick Stanton, you all remember Minnesota Dick? He had years where he did over 12,000 BPOs a year. We need 155 BPOs per week, five days in a week, right? Monday through Friday? I am a firm believer in not working weekends. How many of you would prefer not to work weekends? Okay. I also don't like this whole like eight hour a day thing. I don't know who the hell invented that. Two to three is plenty. So we got 155 a week, five days per week. We divide that by five, that's 31 BPOs per day. That's all it is, 31 a day. One full-time clerical staffer at a low four BPOs per hour is already 32 per day, is it not? And the reality is they can do six to seven an hour which becomes important later. Photo inspections. When they're grouped means they're all in the same geographic area. That's why volume is key. Volume is everything here. The more you do, the easier and more efficient it's going to get and more profitable it actually becomes. If you're grouping them in one or two neighborhoods, they can not come out every 10 minutes. I mean, they're only taking five photos and a quick checkbox of notes you're going to give them. So they do about three or four an hour on exteriors. Interiors take a little longer but they pay more anyway. So you pay more to your shooters for interiors, don't you? You pay, oh, you are so generous. Okay, I used to pay them $10 more, so okay. $10 a drive-by, $20 an interior. She only pays them the extra five bucks. Digital and mobile technology allow these to be virtual employees. They don't require a desk, they don't require office space, they don't require phones, rent, nothing. They can work from their home, their car, anything. Clerical and data input. This is your BPO department manager. This is the person who's not only doing the BPOs, they're controlling everything else. 
okay? They're responsible for accepting and confirming the orders, and you need them there right on the computer screen all the time. Because a lot of these BP orders are getting shotgunned out now. Whoever grabs them first wins. They're the ones who assign the photos and the inspectors. They're going to do that for you. Then they will complete and submit the BPOs. At the beginning, you might want to review them yourself, but once you get somebody that you know is good and you trust, you'll be all right there. Okay, should be delegated as manager of the BPO department with full authority over the field inspectors. Make it clear that this person has authority. If one of the field inspectors comes to you and says, you know, Stacy, my boss is an absolute bitch. I didn't say, I didn't oh, yeah, okay, and they come to you and you go, and you sympathize with them or anything else, Stacy now has no authority and they will never listen to what she said. So, you remember that Ronco loved, how many remember Ron Popeil? Oh, yeah. Loved Ron, pocket fisherman, the rotisserie grill, loved him. Okay, that set it and forget it, greatest concept on earth. This is a set it and forget it for your own good. You put this person in charge, you leave them in charge. One of those field people comes to you to bitch or whatever, you send him right back then and say, look, you work for Stacy, not me, deal with her. Because otherwise, they're gonna be on you all the time and you have no authority as my manager, correct? You can't do your job. How many of you interfere in that relationship with your staff? All of you, because you're damn control freaks. Let it go. <laughs> Hardest thing to do, but imperative here. Field inspectors, flat fee, independent contractors, best way to go at the beginning. I will tell you, as you get a lot of volume, I found it much more profitable to put them on salary, because my cost was down to about $3 in inspection, because they got a weekly paycheck. Some weeks they ran their asses off, other weeks they sat around, but on the average, it was much cheaper. But flat fee for now. Um, okay, again, large, sal large volume salary will actually become more profitable. Minimum skills required. How much skill does it take, is it to take five photos? Front, left side, right side, back, street, right? If you can get to it. Is that really a complicated thing to teach someone to do? Okay, any seven-year-old in an iPhone can manage that one, correct? So where's the skill? Used, used to be the biggest problem with the field people is most of them couldn't read maps and they got lost all the time. You know, the old Hagstrom maps, the front boys, you guys remember that? Okay, then they had to plot their routes. That took them a while. Now we get GPS. Plug in 10 addresses and MapQuest will give you the most efficient route. Okay, and then they got the GPS in the car. There is no skill required. How much training do you have to give them? 15 minutes at most, if you can't figure this out. Mix of part-time and full-time is easily accommodated. Think about this. If they want to do this for you full-time, you can let them. Or I would typically spread it out amongst, instead of two or three full-time, I'd rather have 10 part-times. Because if two or three of them get sick, quit, whatever, I don't really care. It's much safer, okay? I'm a little more risk-averse that way. <clears throat> BPO department manager should be a licensed agent, correct? Are we not swearing that these BPOs are being completed by a licensed person? So make them get a licensed one. They're easy to find people with appraisal backgrounds. I would suggest a salary and a bonus. So maybe the salary is $15 an hour and you bonus them $5 a BPO for everyone on time. And you penalize them $10 a BPO for everyone that's late. Think about that. Nice motivation, isn't it? Especially at the end of the first week. The best ones are analytics, who have a real estate background but are lousy salespeople. How many of you have a couple agents in your office or you know agents? They're great with paperwork, their files are perfect, their works of art, they're on time for everything, and they can't sell a damn thing. How many of you know agents like that? Here you go, first employee. <clears throat> That's what you want. They're easier to find than you think. Just, just for the hell of it, when you get home on Craigslist, put an ad on Craigslist Real estate licenses, salary position. What, what do you think is going to happen to your phones? Blow it blows up, which, by the way, is another recruiting trick we're going to teach you how to use later. Okay? Now, or fa how many of you use Fast, fast Flyer or E Flyer? What are they, 20 bucks? 20 bucks sends out to every agent in town. Again, that's all part of your recruiting program because you're growing. Remember the moving train? So, again, they all tie together. Field inspectors, shooters. Your best source are your own agents. They always need gas money. 
How many of you have agents in your office who haven't closed a deal in two months? You all do. Or you know them. You know what the hardest thing as an agent like that is when they actually get a good buyer call, they don't have money for the gas. Cost me 100 bucks to fill up a car right now. Same for you. Take some of your agents, give them a part-time job where they can make a couple hundred bucks a week. That's the gas and food money. At least they can go out and sell. Because if you don't do that, that agent, where, what's going to happen to them? They're going to be out of the market anyway. So it's a nice thing. By the way, goes back to the ad for salaried agents. Does that work like a charm? It's a great recruiting tool. Salary potential, non-sales income, great recruiting tool. Really better to keep this part-time. Only a couple assignments each day, but have more of them. I'd rather have 10 or 15 agents each doing two or three of these for me every morning on their way to work, and I'm gonna talk about that, than anything else. Because that guarantees I always have plenty of coverage, one flakes out, no big deal. But what else happens here? I got 10 or 15 agents that might actually sell something by accident and make me more money. You see where I'm going with this? Recruiting tool, additional sales agents, additional sales will all come from this. Gives you a sales force. Because now you got somebody to give you leads and your referral fees that you're going to charge 30% for. Let them do a couple BPOs each morning. They can make a couple hundred bucks a week. And in the afternoons, they can show buyers. Again, easier to find than you think. All right. Can any of you in this room not find someone like this? Can any of you not find 10 agents like this in your market in a weekend? No, it's real easy. Okay, you want to set them up geographically by where they live. This is important, okay? This way they can always grab photos on their way in from home to the office or on their way back home at night. Cuts travel time, they're traveling anyway. So what we did here in, in Vegas is we took the entire valley, which is kind of overly squarish, for lack of a better way, I don't have a graphic for this. We cut it into quadrants, okay? We were northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. And those assignments went to our team members that lived in those areas. Think about how efficient this made them, okay? Much easier on them, so they're willing to work for less. And also, it was right by their house, so they're in the area all the time. So they can either take them in the morning without too much trouble or in the evening on the way home. Or if I called for, what happens, how many times you get a rush order? If they, if they only live a couple blocks away, they'll go do it, right? Not if you're gonna send them 30 minutes across town. So divide it to typically four areas, quadrants, and as you get larger and larger, you can make it smaller segments, but have the person who lives in that area take those assignments, much more efficient. Cuts, it also cuts down on the gas expense and travel time, which will be your number one bitch. Again, more efficient, less bitching. See, I'm jumping ahead of my own slides, okay? <laughs> Establishing your service area. This will vary based on your market size, Traffic patterns, it's not about mileage per se, it's about time, okay? Where Stacy is, for example, is very rural. You, you, you can get 30 miles in 30 minutes for the most part, right? Yes. Okay, how long does it take you to go 30 miles in LA? Oh, man. A, couple hours. a few days. Okay, so when you look at your service area, don't go by miles on a map, go by travel time. And that's how you set your service area, otherwise it becomes inefficient, okay? And you base this on location from your office. And you have to do that, because remember the client rules, they have distance requirements. So start within the distance requirements from your office. Establishing a service area. Typically a 15 to 25 mile radius. That means if my office is here, I want to go about 15 miles out this way, about 15 miles out this way, giving me a 30 mile coverage. If you're more rural and driving time is easier, then you can expand that out. Some of you in a very, if you're in LA, 15 miles is too much. You can't do it efficiently. So 30 to 50 mile coverage area around your office. Once you, we talked about this, the quadrants. Once you have your service area established, I would start by dividing it into four quadrants and starting with four shooters. They can all be part-time. Assign a field inspector to each of those quadrants. Those are your shooters. Again, I can't stress this enough what a big difference this made when we started looking at it this way. Get a field inspector that lives in that area or one of your agents, or find an agent that does. You have to build your zip code list for your service area. I put it on a Word doc so you can cut and paste it, because you're gonna need it later to start filling out BPO applications. Create some standard cut and paste verbiage for specific segments of your service area. This is market info. Standard company profile to cut and paste for the BPO provider registration. Create a standard template document in Word that has all the different things 
that need to go on a BPO application and vendor registration because you you're not going to be doing a lot of them, but your BPO manager is. She'll be doing a lot of registering. So you want to be able to cut and paste all the different things. BPO department manager, their job description. They accept the new assignments. They assign the field reps, your shooters. They actually complete the BPOs. They submit the invoices, and that's all automated, that part. So that's great now, okay? They're constantly registering in vendor databases. A couple tips and tricks for your manager here. They should keep all BPO provider portal windows open on their desktop at all times, constantly monitoring for new assignments so they grab them first. In other words, you don't just, how many of you use a double monitor setup? <clears throat> okay, I want your BPO provider to have four. You know that four stack? And I want them to have all the windows open on top. And you need two monitors in order to keep them large enough to see them. Down below, when you do BPOs, you need two monitors, don't you? One to pull your comps, one to actually do the BPO. But I want those two top ones up there with the portals open, so the minute something hits, they see it instantly. Got it? And you can use a little sound effect in there as well. It's one of the settings in the um, browser. Okay. Microsoft Outlook. How many of you use Outlook? How many of you know about the little window that pops up in the right corner when you get a new email? Okay, with the description. I want that kept open and running on her main computer on the bottom that she's doing the most work on. Because every time that email comes in from a BPO, how many know you don't have to open your email, you just have to click on that new message to get to it directly? Okay, so you don't have to go to the email. So you click that, boom, click and accept it. First rule you teach her, and because she's getting bonus, and I'm assuming her, because I've always done better with females, well, though I've had males too, so it could be a guy. So he or she, see I'm being sensitive, isn't that great? <laughs> Non-gender specific, what a first. Okay, <clears throat> I want them trained to stop whatever they're doing. The minute they see that flash, they read it, BPO, click it, which will pop up in the window and accept it. Then go back to what they're doing, that's the priority. It's not like, oh, as soon as I finish this, I'll get to that. Doesn't work like that. Got to use an automation system. You cannot do BPOs with volume without one. They should have the cut and paste comments worksheet open at all times. It'll keep them much faster, hence a four monitor setup. How much is a monitor nowadays? About 90 bucks for an LCD monitor? Yeah. And that little stack thing that holds four of them is like 100? The biggest headache is getting the video card for the computer that supports four. But some of the laptops, and a lot of them already do it. Yeah, this laptop will actually do four monitors with a little adapter piece, it splits it out. So it's not even that expensive anymore. You used to have to buy these expensive video cards, you don't. But she should have that open on a screen too, so she can move it. The only part that's really time consuming on BPO is putting the comments in. Well, not have to cut and paste and you got five choices. You know, if you're in a high-end area, you've got high-end comments on that market. If you're in a low-end area, you know what the comments are. Just set them up. Now on the, on the paste work, cut and paste comments section, I would update those about once a month because what the clients really love is when you have market data. Subject location, market currently appreciating, limited inventory, total number of sales last month, total number of listings, blah, blah, blah. Couple of tips. When you're organizing this, remember the daylight hours. Summer is easy because you can shoot photos at eight o'clock at night. Remember in the winter time, it's dark by four. The other thing is, when do most criminals come out? Yeah, if you're gonna go clean out a crack house, what's the best time to show up? First thing in the morning, when, when all the criminals and drug dealers are still asleep. Okay, same thing with shooting BPOs too. Shoot them in the morning, you've got daylight, and if it's bad neighborhood, everybody's asleep anyway, you won't get hassled. Okay, winter months, very difficult as the light is gone. I mean, we have a problem with utility companies here in Nevada. The gas company won't go in a house after four o'clock in the winter. Right. So you can't get utilities on. Okay, BPO managers should have all assignments out the evening before. Very important. You want your field staff getting their pictures in the morning when there's sufficient light and it's early and they're in the neighborhood already because they live there, okay? So the last thing she does for the night is make sure all the assignments that came in go out. Now, the other thing I would recommend is that your BPO manager is very good and proficient with mobile technology and has an iPad or at least a good iPhone or a Galaxy something you can really read and she monitors that or he monitors that at home and accepts at home as well. And if they're being bonused on them, do you think they'll do that? Yeah. Oh yeah, they'll grab stuff at midnight for you. Okay, iPhones are really great because you can set a mail account as a VIP. You know how that works? Where even when the phone's just sitting there off, it flashes if there's a message from them or buzzes and you can even assign a tone to it. You can set that for all the BPO accounts. 
So even if it's 8 o'clock at night, the phone will buzz with a certain tone from one of the BPO providers to accept it. It's a lot of real good tricks there in the mobile technology. Okay, this is more efficient when you're using agents. You can take them on the way to the office. There's no separate trip, and they won't bitch. And you'll have your stuff by 10 every morning, which is important. What do we say this was at the very beginning? Saturday and Oh, you can do better than that. You're disappointing me. Very, I'm very disappointed in all of you. All right, set it and forget it. It really is. That's what's so great about this business. It requires one full-time BPO department manager for 20 grand a month. If you want to make more, you'll need another person. Gee, wouldn't that be a horrible problem to have? Yeah, you'd be disgusted, wouldn't you? Okay, four to five part-time field inspectors, that is your minimum. Okay, that's each one of them doing four or five a day. I would rather have 20 each doing two or three a day, wouldn't you? Much more reliable, much faster, much safer. It does require some good organization, accounting and tracking systems. We've built those into Rio for you. Okay, which is what the next line says. Utilize the tracking assignment within Rio. They can literally, the, your BPO manager can literally assign the photo assignment right out through Rio. It'll pop right on the person's phone, their email, text message if you set it that way. So the communication is great and it'll remind them who to follow up with. It takes care of all that. And that is the end of that. What do you think about that, guys? Can you all do that? Learn the true secrets of real estate success for free from one of the most amazing real estate brokers in the country, Michael Crine. Never miss an episode. Sign up for freebrokerschool.com. Subscribe on our site, YouTube, or iTunes.